All right, good evening, ladies and gents. Welcome back to Compound Interesting. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing the opportunity in uranium stocks and specifically nuclear power. The reason I decided to research into uranium stocks is I'm seeing a bit of interest in it on, on, online and it's also kind of detached from the crypto markets. It's detached from the stock market. It's kind of more the, however well uranium stocks do is dependent on the price of uranium and the the price of uranium is dependent on the amount of nuclear energy that will be used in the future. And there's a lot of things that are pointing towards the idea that governments will be using a lot more nuclear energy in the future. So nuclear energy was kind of propaganda against for decades. People said it was dangerous. People said it was not good for the environment, which is completely crazy because it's actually the cleanest uh, it's the cleanest way to produce energy because there's no emissions from nuclear power. It's even cleaner than solar and wind. I'll just quickly explain how nuclear fission works. So we need the uranium, the thing that we're potentially mining for. So we get the uranium, we enrich it. So it's like mostly uranium-235 and then like 5% uranium-239 or something. I forget the exact numbers, but you enrich it. So it has more of the radioactive element. Then you fire a proton at it really, really hard. And that actually is able to split the atom so it splits the atom so we originally have one uranium atom we split it into two and it doesn't just split into two it also fires out more protons from that which is, is the chain reaction that you've probably heard about so those protons go off and split more atoms uh, but the main point is that after you split out th that atom the mass of the protons and the two new atoms does not equal the mass of the original atom that you split and what's the missing mass? The missing mass is energy. Basically, like one proton or one neutron gets converted into energy. And that's Einstein's famous equation. E energy equals mc squared mass times the speed of light squared. So you get this little bit of energy and this chain reaction turns into a lot of energy. And that energy is present as heat. And that heat is used to heat up water and that water turns into steam which turns the turbines so that's why we need uranium for nuclear energy and that's nuclear fission so if we need uranium for nuclear energy and uranium is a scarce resource now you can start to see why uranium mining stocks could be a good investment and uranium uh, nuclear power is actually since Chernobyl, there's only been two deaths from nuclear power, which is much less than oil, gas, even wind and solar. It's much. It's actually much safer, apart from the big Chernobyl disaster. Even Fukushima, or I forget what, what the Japanese city, where the last uh, ex accident happened. There's only been two accidents um, in Japan that only killed two people, and maybe just one. Uh, one died from cancer, so it's hard to judge whether or not that was definitely because of the explosion nevertheless as we know the world wants to deglobalize uh, particularly Europe wants to become independent of Russia and Russian energy so they've been closing their nuclear power plants for decades and they might just they might just be waking up to the idea that they really shouldn't be doing that at all when nuclear power is really clean it's really consistent like you don't need the wind or the sun to be shining for nuclear power to be being generated and you don't need to be 100% reliant on other countries you could mine it in your own country and uranium such a small such a small amount produces such a, a huge amount of energy you only need a small amount of uranium to create a lot of energy which is the other nice thing so germany was the main culprit of closing their nuclear power plants and they're feeling it the worst from russia now uh, but their government has done a bit of a u-turn um, and they're extending the lives of some of their nuclear power plants that they were going to close and particularly the, the main culprit that has started this uh, u-turn about closing nuclear power plants and actually reopening them was actually japan so since 2011 that's when the last accident happened in japan the price of uranium you can see here absolutely nuked uh, no pun intended but it, it collapsed in 2010 and just been in a downtrend up until you know a couple of years ago and the reason japan is at the u-turn japan is an island and it's kind of difficult for them to get natural resources they have none on their on japan on japan's actual island so they're paying through the nose for fossil fuels their economy hasn't been strong for decades so nuclear power is a nice cheap reliable source of energy so the public opinion has changed in Japan and as you can see 
a couple of years ago when the Japanese government announced that the price of uranium started skyrocketing again. Well, not skyrocketing, but uh, it was below $10 an ounce at, at about $20. And this period where the price of uranium was in a quite a collapse or was in very low territory uh, in like 2017, 2018, loads of uranium mining stocks went bankrupt uh, they closed their facilities so the ones remaining have a bit of uh, no, there's i think there was about 350 uh, before that time uranium mining stocks public mining stocks and now there's only like 80 or something so a little bit less competition for the remaining uranium mining stocks so environmentalists are starting to realize that nuclear power is a good transitionary clean energy source uh, before we were able to go to fully to solar and wind uh, and a good way to get us off fossil fuels in the meantime so even germany has as i mentioned germany has cancelled closing a few of the plants belgium extended the life of two reactors uh india is going to build a mega reactor because they're they're only using coal and france is the big one there is they're planning on building 14 france are already the biggest users of nuclear energy and yeah they're already they're sorry they're the second biggest after the united states but yeah they're really committed to investing heavily in nuclear energy so there's a lot of growth in nuclear energy probably going to be happening over the next decade or two well joe biden with the inflation reduction act did the did 30 billion dollars worth of tax credits for new nuclear power plants as well so they also want to be independent from Russia. So like I mentioned, a lot of the small uranium miners went out of business in the 2017 to 2018 period. And the fact that it takes about five to 10 years to actually open a mine to mine uranium. In the meantime, the ones that are already there, the ones that already have the facilities open and are ready to mine uranium, like they've, they've kind of dropped their production to max capacity because the demand for uranium wasn't as high. But even still, like even if they get back to max capacity, the price of uranium could continue increasing. Now we're a little bit late to this trade, as you can see. Uh, a lot. This is one of the biggest companies. Cameco is the biggest company for uranium mining. You can see they really bounced heavily off the bottom. Uh, so we could be a little bit late to this trade. But as you can see, this is an extremely volatile sector. And if the demand for uranium continues increasing and the price of uranium continues increasing, the profit margins that the uranium companies, the uranium miners will be making will be really, like, it doesn't cost them anything more to mine the same uranium, but if the price just keeps increasing, their profit margins explode. So that's kind of the the good thing about investing in mining, but the, the downside is also equally strong. If the price of uranium drops below 20 and drops below $10 again, they will, start losing money really fast so that's it's a it's a two two-edged sword but the idea is it's not cyclical it's cyclical in its own sense it's diversified from tech stocks it's diversified from crypto so that's the nice thing about it so as you can see from both all of these charts of the price of uranium and the different stocks the different mining stocks that you could buy this is a cyclical sector so it's not something you buy and hold and you you power through the volatility but eventually after 10 years it'll be worth a lot more it's more of a stock where you have to you know swing trade your way in and out and we're kind of probably hopefully just halfway through or potentially even just starting a new cycle but if i was to invest and made some profits it's not something i would hold for the long term it's something i would get in and get out after after i've made my returns that i was satisfied with so it's something i would hold for the very long term because you know it's going to come back down eventually probably and the other reason it's so volatile is because it's actually a tiny market like the entire uranium market cap is under 40 billion at the moment so that's like bitcoin in 2013 or something that's like crypto you know five or ten years ago well not ten years ago but maybe like five years ago more like when crypto was really volatile and tiny that's what the uranium sector is like right now so that's another reason why it's so volatile um, so that can work to the, the that can obviously be work to the good and work to the bad. Okay, so we've established that the demand for uranium is likely to increase increase in the future as public opinion about uranium and nuclear energy has been shifting over the last couple of years, just recently really. Um, so public 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 opinion has been shifting. Governments are kind of being forced to 
look at different energy sources. Uh, so the demand is going to be increasing. It's clean, it's reliable, etc., etc. But is it perfect? Let's just discuss a couple of the downsides uh, that could that could, some of the risks to this trade. Uh, the first one is kind of a more of a, a very long term risk, but scientists recently this has just happened uh recently got a breakthrough in nuclear fusion so this is basically like a different process from nuclear fission so nuclear fission like the one i explained is when two the atom breaks up into two nuclear fusion is when you basically fuse two atoms and the fusing of two atoms leads to a, a bit of energy being released as well but this is the first time where like you have to put in a little little bit of energy to start a nuclear fission reaction like we mentioned but you always get out more energy that you put in for nuclear fission but for the first time like nuclear fu fusion to be able to get nuclear fusion to release some energy we always used to have to put in more energy than we got out which obviously isn't a good way to create energy but now for the first time we've managed scientists i, I haven't managed it but uh scientists shot the proton at it or shot the, a laser or something like that uh, and the energy of the laser was less than the energy that we got out of the nuclear fusion reaction uh, but that doesn't mean we're going to be able to do nuclear fusion next year and next two years it's probably still a long way down but it is it is a step in the direction of nuclear fusion which importantly doesn't use uranium so the uranium mining stocks could be greatly impacted by that the other two kind of risks or negative aspects to investing in uh, uranium mining stocks and nuclear energy is that a lot of people myself included think the price of energy is trending towards zero and solar and wind are just getting cheaper and cheaper to produce energy and energy is going to become very very abundant so solar and wind is a big problem for nuclear energy well it's not a problem but eventually solar and wind is probably going to be the main sources of our energy probably just mostly solar and hydro as well of course but those kind of renewable renewable energies are probably going to become so cheap to produce energy that it might not be worth it to produce nuclear energy in the future. And then finally, obviously, the biggest risk if there's another accident, uh, like the Fukushima. Sorry, I can't say that city's name. I should probably look it up. But if there's another big explosion, if there's another accident on a nuclear power plant, obviously, obviously that would look really bad for the industry. Um, but I think that's an extremely tiny risk. I think the the safety protocols have been up to the absolute max. Like they're much more advanced than they were even ten years ago, and certainly fifty years ago from the Chernobyl disaster. And then obviously there's nuclear waste that you have to deal with, but that's not a risk. That's just more of a an inconvenience. All right. So what what is my personal take on uranium stocks? Am I personally going to be investing in uranium mining stocks? <laughs> For me, there's a lot of risks, especially with the solar and wind, like the price of energy is going to be collapsing. So I haven't really fully made my mind up yet. Um, some of these companies, are, uh, I'll probably look into some of these companies deeper. And if you want me to share my analysis on the likes of Cameco, which is the biggest one, and there's a couple of other different investment opportunities in these uranium mining stocks. If you want me to do a deep dive on a couple of them, yeah, I can do that. But uh, I do like the fact that it's completely diversified from crypto and stocks and maybe I could get a bit of a swing trade and then sell it and then once Bitcoin and crypto starts taking off again I can sell that uh, uranium mining stock and put it back into crypto. That would be nice but uh, I think I need to do a bit more research into it. I'm not fully convinced on it just yet but uh, it's definitely something, definitely something worth researching a bit more and something I'm very interested in. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this quick research on uranium and uranium nuclear power mining stocks. Yeah, really hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.